So uh, we're going into another talk, and uh, we have Desmond Obisi come talk to us about, you know, accelerating your personal and professional growth through open source contributions. And please clap for him while he makes his way to the stage. Hi. How you doing? How you feeling? Are you feeling nervous? Just relax. <laughs> All right, cool. Hello, everybody. Yeah, so um, my name is Desmond, and um, yeah, I'm happy to be your miss today. So I'm an open source engineer and developer advocate, developer experience. I contribute to open source majorly. So where I work, actually, I contribute to open source at Flank Source. And I also contribute to Ansible technical documentation and at Polytope Labs. So I also um, do speaking engagements like this, and also I build stores. I don't know. So today I'll be speaking on accelerating your sorry. Yeah. So accelerating your personal and professional um, growth through open source contributions. So basically, how to stand out in a world full of talent. So if um, if you should notice. Um, many people are coming into tech, right? Many people are beginning to find tech interesting, different aspects, development, design, program management, like a lot of them. And we need to uh, understand that for you to be able to see as a valuable asset, as a talented, everybody's talented, most people are talented, but you need to do things that will make you to stand out. So, so the essence of our talk today is like how we can leverage on open source contribution to stand out in a world full of talent. So, so first is uh, we do an introduction. <coughs> Sorry, what is open source and why we should contribute to open source? So, open source um, software is a computer software, you know, that is uh, released under this license that you can use it, you can reproduce it, and you can distribute it as you want. So that's it's a police under that license that you can use it for anything you want to use it for without the maybe the real main uh, owner or the main originator holding you accountable on how you use it actually. So it's, a, it's actually a way of like building softwares that is free and open to all and everybody can contribute to its growth and everybody can make it better and everybody can make a better version of it. So that's all about open source. So, and there are a lot of things about open source, not just development. It's about the community. It's about the people using it, the developers. It's about like how everything is being organized, how everything is being managed, and all that. So that's open source for you. Unlike maybe closed source software that um, is marketable, is um, a it has patent or stuff like that. So that's open source. So why contribute to open source? So I listed um, a few um, reasons why you should contribute to open source. So if you look at the image there, it, you see something like all modern digital infrastructure. And then you see another one, a little piece of code holding that big infrastructure, which is some open source project somebody in Nebraska is maintaining since 2003. So you see that open source is like changing a lot in the world of software, right? So open source is actually like contributing a lot. So and the reason why you should contribute to open source is like to give back to community. So somebody like me, when I begin to learn how to you know become a software engineer, I leverage most of um, programs developed by open source communities like this. And that's how I started my journey. And so I might want to give back to the community, right? So I will go ahead, contribute to any open source project I love or I use and I like. I might decide to help them manage the community, help them do some developer experience, help them document whatever they are doing and just make it better. So another reason is um, to learn new skills and to meet mentors. So last year, for example, I 
got interested in blockchain. I came here for Polygon event, so I met someone, and they are having like a community call like every, every week, two times. That's how I joined them, started learning from them, and I became good with blockchain. I even, because of that experience, I got a job. So it's also like an avenue to meet mentors, learn a new skill through open source. And then another reason is to meet people and build network. Like we are all here today, you can meet other uh, people that maybe if are in the same field or even in different fields, you can network with them, you can increase your network. Um, somebody might, somebody here might be like a key to you being the next big thing tomorrow just because you are here in this event, right? So another reason is to make a difference or to make an impact. So if you want maybe to change the way something is or something is working, you can use open source to do that, right? If you don't like do things the conventional way and you want to make impact, right, in the world of software, you can use open source to do that. And then most people do it to have fun. Yeah, most people use it to have fun. So that's another reason why people contribute to open source. And like the main reason why we are here today is like to build a portfolio and to stand out, right? So you can use open source to build a portfolio and to stand out among other talented people. So the next slide is um, I want to talk about the talent to job and then job to career growth pipeline. So uh, first I'll talk about like the challenges, right? From talent to job and then the challenges from job to career progression. So first of all, um, I think most of the issue we do face, um, like why breaking out in tech is maybe getting our first job, landing our first role, or our first gig as maybe junior engineer, junior designer, junior product manager, product, uh, all that, right? So but then there are challenges, right, that comes with this talent to job um, uh, pipeline. So the first one is like, it's kind of time consuming. So to, re to recruit someone is actually time consuming. So for companies, right? So when they put out those ads, millions of, or thousands of people apply to those jobs. They have to review them and all that. So it's like stressful. So that's like one of the challenges. So sometimes you might see they, they might end up not recruiting from those thousands. And next week they'll still put out um, another ads for that same job because maybe they couldn't find what they are looking for. So yeah, another one is like cultural fit and team dynamics, right? So there might be challenges about um, cultural fit and team dynamics, how maybe a certain person or a certain demography fits into the company's culture and all that. So while I'm listing these um, challenges, I also like be talking about how open source can fix them. So something like time consuming recruitment process if, um, let's say, contribute to open source and you have a portfolio that shows your work you do in open source, it will easily like, make you to stand out like in the pool of talent. Let's say there are thousands of talent and they just see your CV and see that, okay, you have worked with this technology. In fact, you contribute to this technology as a software engineer, you help them build it. So you, you can easily say, okay, this is our guy, right? So this is how like, contributing to open source can make you stand out from this uh, time consuming recruitment process and different from other people in the talent pool. Then for cultural fit and team dynamics. So because open source is like open for everybody, you meet different people. So the open source community actually make it um, easy for you to adapt to different uh, culture and different uh, team dynamics, right? You work with different projects, different projects have the work like handling their teams and running their project and their programs, right? So. By the time maybe you contribute to like different open source projects, you are already accustomed. You know like how to work with people in different time zones, how to communicate with people in different culture, different country and all that. So it makes you stand out. Let's say you have a cultural fit interview. If they ask you those questions, you know what to answer from experience, right? Because you contribute to open source. And then another challenge is, is like shortage of talented people. Yeah, a lot of people might be doing tech, a lot of people might be calling themselves by a particular title, but then the people that are actually talented are very uh, uh, low in number. So, and then most companies, they are going for those talented ones, right? They are hustling for those talents. So, 
if you contribute to open source, I bet mean, you like it will help you build your talent, help you grow, and help you you know stand out from others in in a talent pool where you have like many people, and then let's say they are looking for a front end engineer that is good with design system, and let's say now you you are contributing to Material UI as an open source engineer, but then other people what they have in their portfolio is a calculator app, um, their portfolio website, and you know those things. So they, they will easily pick you, right? So yeah, so there is cast for talent, and open source can help you like stand out in such situations. And then another challenge is like low number of niche experts. So when I mean niche experts, like people that are expert in a particular niche. So for example, let's say game development. I I really see like game developers around in our ecosystem. So yeah, that's that should be like another reason. So if you're an expert in the niche that people are not maybe plenty, you can also like stand out. Another reason is like skill gaps and changing technology landscape. So I have a few minutes left. So let me talk about the job career progression. So for you now, let's say you have a job and you want to progress. So you might not progress based on these reasons. Lack of visibility and advocacy. Nobody like speaks for you. Nobody sees what you are doing. But then if you are working in open source, contributing to open source, your works are in the open. Everybody sees it. And even people you work with advocate for you, right? Then inadequate recognition, same thing and rewards then bias and subjective evaluation. So open source community, like you already see something like people being biased towards each other and then giving like subjective evaluations and lack of mentorship and guidance which open source offers and then limited opportunity for skills development which open source also offers. So how open source can help you stand out? You get to learn new technologies, you get to build trust and reputation and you have access to a rich network of people, like all those top engineers, 10S engineers. You have opportunity to work with them and opportunity to amass experience and build an amazing portfolio. So like, these are testimonials of people that open source have helped put like, in the limelight. So I have to like, pick people from our country, Nigeria. I don't have to like, pick so that you know that this is something that is possible. This is something that people have done and that try to help them. So, the first one is um, Divine Odazier. So he just wanted to say the first three years of getting into tech, he struggled, right? So, but then before Oscar Fest 2022, say he just he was just like a technical writer and all that. So basically after that of Oscar Fest, he met someone and um, I think he messaged the person and the person like took him in and mentored him and today he's like, he, can, he travels the world for events to speak and open source like really changes his life. So another person is um, Uche Chukobasi. So he, last year Oscar Fest, if you are there, he talked how he, he moved like from zero to hero, like after attending um, Oscar Fest and how he leveraged on that to build his career. And then another person is um, our routier. So how she went from like beginner to a GitHub expert to leveraging like open source a contribution and working in the open source, right? So like these are testimonials that show you that this is possible. This is what is can be achievable. And you can actually like stand out like when you leverage open source um, contrib um, opportunities like this. So now finding projects and okay, this is like where it gets like real practical. So now these are like places where you can find open source projects you can contribute to. Um, OVO, up for grabs, code triage, first contribution, good first issue. So like these are like best place. First of all, you have to identify your skill and interest. Then explore this platform and join like open source focused community like Chaos, Oscar Fest. Like be part of the community, know what's going on, and see how you can like leverage those community to you know build your skill and get into open source. And then so another one is like project evaluation. So you have to like evaluate what like the project you are getting into, like how the project run, does it fit your interest and goals, like what is your strength that you have to capitalize on, and then what is the weakness you saw in the project that you have to like help them out with, right? So you can also like identify what a project is not doing well, offer to help them do it as an open source contribution, 
and you can get recognized for doing that. And so if you're getting started in open source, so these are like maybe a few steps I listed here. So you have to like select the right, right open source project, which is very crucial. Like take time to understand the project and you know study the works. Okay, begin with small manageable tasks, right? Then study the works of experienced contributors there and you know be collaborative, collaborate with others and participate in the community be active, like engage in the community and also keep tracks of your contribution. Like use it and be the kind of portfolio that everybody can see and is out there that okay you are doing the work and you know what to do. And now how can you leverage this thing to build your expertise? So you have to showcase your technical skills. You don't have to be shy about it. Showcase your strength, showcase what you can do. And also if you can contribute to popular open source projects and highlight your contributions, then how to build commitment. You have to be continuous, embrace challenges, and you know, be consistent and persistent, like a normal aspire to Maguire, you know. And then you have to like build network with the people, engage, attend conference and meetups, engage in discussions, collaborate on projects, and then let's say setting realistic goals for yourself and stay motivated and disciplined. So also you have to like share how to measure, know how to measure your success and also like share your success. And that's the end of it. So thank you very much. Okay. All right, that was awesome. I also know that he had a lot to say. Oh yeah. Okay, cool. Um, I also know he had a lot to say, but we need to like manage time. So does anyone have a question? We're just going to take one. Okay. Okay. Um, my question is that for a project, is it that someone will have to look for what the project needs? Or to be listed somewhere that okay well, we need this we need this we need this we have to sit and start look, looking for that. All right, that's a good question. So um, if you are familiar with like the open source ecosystem, the as like for example like GitHub, so they have like the issue tracker board where they com they list like issues they need to work on. Right, it might be design issue, it might be code issue, it might be like discussion. There's also like where you can discuss how to improve this and how to improve that. So you see like where they are listed, yeah. So they have a place where those issues are. Okay, so mm -hmm. if I'm interested in one particular issue now, someone else somewhere is interested in that same thing. So <coughs> how will they accept one person? I don't get it. Well, okay, so the way it works is, um, like I said, it's a community, it's a collaborative effort, right? If somebody wants to work on this uh, particular task and you want to work on it, you can still like message, like talk, talk with the person, okay, let's collaborate and work on it together. So it's not like um, a place where we fight for position. So it's like a community and you can collaborate with others, right? So yeah. Thank you so much. So my question is about uh, Niche. Okay, uh, you said that uh, there are uh, low um, niche experts. So as front-end or a back-end engineer, how do you find a niche uh, that you can become an expert in? So do you just, do you just um, because you write Python, let's say you write Python or Java now, and you're a back-end engineer, how do you break it down to have a particular niche? Thank you for that question too. So I, I believe like in every technology, there are um, particular like sub parts to them. Let's say for instance, you might be interested in performance, how to make backend application to perform well. Someone else might be interested, interested in accessibility, how to make it to be accessible to people that uh, have a kind of uh, deformation or I don't know, disability, yeah. So another person might be interested in um, evangelism, like making people to know about this particular product, 
and person might be interested in technical documentation, right? So yeah, whether you do back end, whether you do front end, there are like um, tiny pieces of the software development life cycle where you can focus on, right? You might decide, okay, I want to focus on performance. So you know everything about code performance. Someone might say, I want to uh, focus on security. So the person knows anything about security and not everybody knows it. So, but once they know, okay, this person is a security expert in this field, you have kind of set yourself up or distinguish yourself from others in that field, right? So, yeah. Thank you so much. Please clap for him. Awesome. So we're going to do something interesting. So we have a few other lightning talks coming up and um, usually it's like 10 minutes. So when the time is rounding up, uh, I would need us to like start snapping our hands. Does that make sense? So, so what, what we're doing is that we're letting the person know that the time is up. <laughs> so can we try it? Try to snap your hands. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 